Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen. Today's gospel is understood by some as a continuation of Jesus' words, and so the, the lectionary presents it. Others consider it a comment by the evangelist, but even if it is just a, a comment by the evangelist, it is certainly the word of God. And this passage begins by God declaring, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. This is the explanation of why Christ must be lifted up, as he said at the end of yesterday's gospel, to save men by giving them eternal life. If the Son of God is crucified, it is not because of a lack of love on the Father's part, it is not because he is neglected, but it is because the Father loves not only his Son, but also the world. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to save it. He could not give anything more. The world was not deserving of his love. It was full of sin, but the only way to make it worthy of love was to expiate its sins, which it could not do for itself. So God gave his only begotten Son, whose blood could pay the price of all sins. And yet this did not save the whole world but only those who believe in the only begotten Son of God. We are speaking here of a living faith, a faith that works through charity. But those who did not believe are already condemned. They are in a state of damnation and deprived of eternal life. They could repent and be saved, but they must believe in order to do so. There is no way of salvation except through Christ. He is the way, the only one. But why would anyone not go to Christ if everyone wants to be happy and there is no lasting happiness except through Christ? Why would anyone reject him? Why would anyone refuse to believe, especially when there is so much evidence, so many miracles, even done to our day? Because they love the wicked things they do. People sin because they like it, at least in the moment in which they do it. At other times they may be unhappy and wish that they could change their life, but because they do not detest their sins, but only the effects of their sins, they continue to commit them. It is also humiliating to recognize your own sinfulness. We all experience this when we have to confess, or at least when we have to confess a sin whose ugliness we recognize. Christ is the light of the world, a light that shows the ugliness of sin, which is our ugliness when we commit them. It seems easier to hide that ugliness in the darkness, to hide it from others so that they won't know, to hide it from ourselves, even to try perhaps to hide it from God, to submerge our unpleasant thoughts in noise and distractions. But only if we come to that light can that ugliness be taken away from us. Only Christ can make us beautiful people. He is the fairest of the sons of men, and we are beautiful in the measure that we resemble him, spiritually. This is why he was crucified, because he loves what we can become. If only we will have the courage to come to the light and live in the light. Most of the Sanhedrin, unfortunately, preferred darkness to light. The deliverance of the apostles from prison by an angel was extremely clear evidence that they were sent by God, and also somewhat ironic for the, the Sadducees, these uh, leaders of the, of the temple hierarchy, who uh, did not believe in angels, and yet an, an, an angel comes to, uh, to deliver those they had made prisoner. The Lord heard the cry of the poor, and he sent his angel to deliver them from prison. The doors were locked, so there was no way that they could have left. None of the guards stationed there saw them leave. There's no natural explanation for the fact that they weren't in the prison. Furthermore, when they got out of prison, they didn't flee the city like criminals would have done. They went to preach in the temple courts where anyone could find them. Despite all this evidence that Sanhedrin still has the apostles brought in for trial. And the crowd is so convinced by the apostles that the court officers have to ask the apostles nicely to come over to the courtroom instead of hauling them in like by force by like escaped prisoners. What happened during their trial is a story for tomorrow. For now let us simply note that even by going to meet the Sanhedrin in their darkness, the apostles come to the light, so that their works may be clearly seen as done in God, even by those who do not want to see. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen.